Hey boys and girls, today we're looking at a new skill, really waves on the ACT. This skill does show up on the ACT all the time, really typically only in the 40s and 50s, sometimes even as a 60, essentially some of the harder questions on the test, but really they're not hard at all. Let's take a look at how waves work, just a quick little review before we hop into some actual questions. Take a look over here. This is of course just a sine wave. Notice it's starting here and it's ending here. But what do the, really, the, the variables here mean? A, B, C, and D. What do those mean? Well, remember that actually A is going to be your amplitude, how high up and how down low your wave goes. Your B is going to be associated with your period. The period of the wave is how long it takes to complete. Really, the formula is 2 pi over B. 2 pi over B will always give you your period, essentially from start to finish is one period. From there, we also have a shift, really a translation C and D. C is a translation left and right, while D is a translation up or down. Every single one of these components is tested on the ACT. There are examples of each one being tested, but today we're gonna to be focusing on parts A and B. Really, the translations aren't too hard, typically. Let's take a look at some actual questions. Come over here with me to number 44 from a real ACT. It says, what is the amplitude of the function y equals three sine x? They couldn't have made this more free. Look at this. What's the a value? Again, zooming out to go back to my formula, wasn't the a the amplitude? In that case, what's the answer for number 44? G, that took seconds. Let's take a look at another one. Maybe a little bit harder, this is number 55 on the right-hand side. Well, this one says, what is the period of the function cosecant of 4x? Well, luckily, we learned something recently. Isn't this guy right here involved with the period? Really, this b value? Yep. In that case, please write this down. Really, we have 2 pi over b. That's a good formula to make a flashcard for. 2 pi over b equals the period. In that case, what do you think? 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. Really, just simplified. I like E. That's a number 55 on the ACT. They think that that question is hard. It's a joke. Let us continue. Come down here for this question now. And this is our challenge question. If you'd like, take a second to pause the video and try the question by yourself. This is really one of the harder wave questions I've ever seen on ACTs. If you don't want to pause, just watch along and we can work through this one together. <clears throat> so if we can get this question, we are going to feel really good about ourselves. Really, we are going to be masters of waves. Let's take a look. First of all, this is a cosine wave. So I do recognize that the cosine wave starts there and ends there. That's one period of the cosine wave. The other thing is the amplitude. It looks like it's going up three and down three. Well, F and G are just trash then. In that case, I'm looking at H, J, and K, but really the discrepancy between those is that value, really the B value controlling the period. In that case, what do you think the answer is here? Well, notice it was finishing every pi. Again, it was finishing every pi. So which one of these would work? Well, I really like k because 2 pi over b dictates that the period will just be pi. So the answer is definitely k. Another way to look at this is that, well, wait a second, isn't this wave going kind of fast? Yeah, it's going to have a value of b kind of bigger than 1. It's going to speed up the wave. Whereas a fraction like that, 1 over 3 or even 1 over 2, that's going to slow down the wave like that. That's going to be a slow wave. Again, if it was a fractional B value, you would have a wave like that, kind of slow motion, right? All right, boys and girls, if you understood that, if you're feeling good about this last question especially, you should be proud of yourself and you might be going to college. I'll see you guys on the next one.